Hello, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through my advice to smash your maths internal assessment, smash your maths IA. Now, I've been head of the department for a number of years now and also worked with stand level and high level students on their maths IAs. So I'm going to give you my tips and tricks to make sure you can maximise your marks on your maths IA. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so these are the up-to-date assessment criteria for your Maths IA. You should be very, very aware of these. So there are five criteria in A to E, one for presentation generally, mathematical communication, personal engagement, reflection, and use of mathematics. Okay, so maximum possible mark for any IA, standard level or high level, is out of 20. So let's look at these one at a time and see how we can improve. So criterion A is about presentation, so making sure that you've got a contents page, aim, rationale, and then the overall view of the, the Mathematics IA, and then conclusion logically developed. And one thing that my students do struggle with is this idea of conciseness for the very top grade. So the key thing here is to avoid repetition. So one of the things that many of my students do initially on their first draft is they'll investigate something and then they'll do exactly the same maths for then two other situations. And one thing you need to avoid is doing the same maths over and over again. Not only will your IA be too long and then you'll be marked down on this particular criterion, but also you're not showing other areas of mathematics that you are aware of. So make sure you avoid repetition. If you're going to use um, data from doing the same maths again and again, just show uh, the results and then move on to some more in-depth analysis. Criterion B is mathematical communication. Notice now it is out of four marks, not three anymore. And one of the key things to do here is make sure you label your diagrams, make sure you label your axes, okay? Make sure you put units as you're going along, for example, making sure that you're precise in exactly what units and what labeling that you're doing. One other thing in order to improve this particular criterion is notice you can use all kinds of different ways to show your communication. Diagrams, tables, charts, graphs and models. And you can use your graphical calculator here as well to help you. So for example, if you use a cumulative frequency diagram for the standard level course, particularly SOAI, then why not show the data as a box plot, for example? Why not show you know, some of the skills of extrapolation interpolation as well? So really do use the variety of different diagrams you've been shown on your AI or AA course and make sure you can maximize this. This is now out of four marks, so making sure you get high marks on this is even more important. Criterion C is personal engagement. And in order to get the higher levels of significant outstanding personal engagement, I'm gonna say here, you need primary data. So <clears throat> I'm putting myself out here and saying, you need to get some primary data. One of the worst things you can do on your Maths IA is to have a secondary data statistic. So you find a source of data from somewhere and then try and do some analysis on this. We don't want to see that. What we want to see is collecting some primary data, maybe finding two variables that you think are correlated, collect that data. Again, you can talk about sample size and what's the relevant sample size there, whether stratify sampling, quota sampling, etc. And then analyzing that data with maths you've used on the standard level, high level content. So secondary, I'm going to write this down and make a point. Secondary stats, IAs, avoid, 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 avoid. That's the most important thing with the personal engagement. Reflection is often one of the worst criteria completed by students, and this is because they struggle to go beyond this limited reflection and to go on to the meaningful reflection and substantial evidence of critical reflection. And the word I'm going to write here is justify. So every time you do a piece of mathematics, you need to justify why you did it. So for example, if you're looking at whether to use an arithmetic mean or a geometric mean, why? Well, if you use a cumulative frequency diagram, why did you use that? Why did you not use a box plot? Why did you not use another way of analyzing? If you're on the AI course and you're looking at Spearman's, this is a classic, Spearman's and Pearson's, okay, why did I use Spearman's? Why did I use Pearson's? What does it tell me about the data? Um, talk about linear and non-linear, for example. You have to justify as you go along. One of the worst things you can do is leave all your justification to the conclusion. You need to show justification as you go through the IA. And if you do that correctly, you can maximize your marks here. 
The last criterion is the use of mathematics. Now this differs slightly for standard level and higher level. So you can see the criteria here. Um, one thing to be aware of is that you need to use mathematics from the course. Okay, if you start using mathematics from IGCSE or the MYP program, you're really gonna limit how much you can go beyond two and three. So think about the mathematics you've used on your course. If you're on the AI side of things, then you've done a lot of statistics. Um, if you've on the AA course, you've done a lot of calculus, try and use mathematics from there. So for example, from a calculus point of view, anything that involves minimums and maximums, optimization, is a very good way to go. So optimizing any particular situation and that really lends itself very nicely. If you're on the HLAI course, graph theory is a very good choice. Uh, if you're on any, either high level course, uh, anything to do with vectors is also a very good choice. So think about the course that you're doing and make sure you do mathematics commensurate with the course. So this also allows you to dip in between AA and AI. So say you're on the AI course, but you want to dip into some AA mathematics. That's really good, yeah? You are allowed to do that. Um, high level, of course, is slightly different. And one thing I want to label here is the idea of rigor. And you can see from the IB's definition, rigor involves clarity of logic and language when making mathematical arguments and calculations. And of course, you also need to aim for the very top grades precise. So you need to make sure it's error three and you use those regular levels of accuracy. So that's a really quick guide to the mistakes to avoid when you're doing your maths IA. Make sure you collect primary data. Again, if you're really stuck on an idea, find two variables that you think could be correlated investigate that, work out uh, correlation coefficients, maybe look at quadratic regression, maybe look at different kinds of regression, and then you've got a good basis there for the rest of your IA. Okay, hopefully you found that useful. Again, feel free to check out my IB AI playlist because there's plenty of good videos there that goes through a lot of exam style questions, but also some key concepts from the high level course. All right, bye-bye for now.